Today is Music Sunday. And uh, what a glorious morning. Uh, uh, Pete and I are so glad you're here to be a part of the music of life, the music of joy. And uh, as Pete was just sharing with the kids, the boys, uh, we're, this Advent we're thinking about the Jesus tree of life. And, um, and just to underline what Pete just said, how is your name a part of the Jesus tree of salvation, life, hope? Hope that changes Ethiopia, hope that can change Tucson. Uh, it's exciting for us to be a part. Uh, and today we're going to begin with the begats. Uh, where have the begats become? Um, we're going to really look at Jesus' tree. Our scripture reading is Matthew chapter 1, the genealogy of Matthew of Jesus. And uh, because, I, because just personally I love the begats, we're using the King James this morning. Deal? Okay. What if you disagreed? I, we got, okay. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Phares and Zerah of Thamar, and Phares begat Ezram, and Ezram begat Aram, and Aram begat Amenadab, and Amenadab begat Naasson, and Naasson begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. Staying with me? Good. <clears throat> and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. And Solomon begat Reboam, and Reboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa. And Asa begat Josaphat, and Josaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias. And Ozias begat Joatham. And Joatham begat Ahaz, and Ahaz begat Ezekias. And Ezekias begat Manassas, and Manassas begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josias. And Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Bethlehem. Or excuse me. Good. <laughs> Paying attention. Babylon. Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, <laughs> Jeconias begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Jerobabel, and Jerobabel begat Abiud, and Abiud begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor. And Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliud. And Eliud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathan, and Mathan begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Let's pray. Well, Lord, we do thank you for the reading of these names. We thank you that you know our names and that you are a God of all generations. Lord, help us now in these moments, please. Help us to hear your voice and to respond with our family stories. In your name we pray, amen. So it's Musical Sunday, and I just, uh, I just want to announce, I've been working on learning a new instrument. Um, I've even taken a lesson. And I'm sorry, I'm not ready to perform today. But um, these are spoons. And I've been working on musical spoonage. 
Uh, and uh, I, I did perform for my family. Uh, it's kind of a private concert several months ago. And uh, they laughed and laughed and laughed and then started looking up therapists. And I just share that because I think sometimes music in our families and uh, family trees can be awkward or hard. Like some of you have shared with me, I'm becoming more worried about music diminishing within our own family circles. And, and have you realized that one of the few rare places in our society today where ordinary people can sing out loud with others is worship, church? And do you know how important that is? And have you realized, just looking at Jesus' family tree, how important the lineage of our Messiah is? So today, uh, very briefly, I want us to think about why genealogies matter and why music matters, if we can pull that off. So let's start with the begats. Why genealogies in our Bible? Uh, I have a pastor friend who tells his congregation that if they have trouble sleeping at night to read the Bible, the genealogies. Genealogies matter because people matter. <coughs> And the pedigree relationships of our families matter. Matthew traces the lineage of Jesus all the way back to Father Abraham. Abraham was the father of God's covenant people, right? But, but notice Matthew also stresses that Jesus is related to David. We read the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now, let's be clear, among the Hebrew people in that tradition, if you wanted to be a priest, you had to be from the tribe of Levi. I've been wanting to say this for a long time. In short, if you wanted to be a priest, you had to have Levi genes. No, that's okay. It's okay. Let's, let's stay on focus. But among the Hebrews, the Hebrew people, they knew that their real hope, uh, their hope that would last, would come from someone called God's anointed one, the Messiah. And they all knew that person would come from the family of David. And so this is why Jesus' pedigree matters. It matters because hope matters in this world, and it's because you and I matter in the eyes of God. And so, friends, as our family relationships matter, your birth, your family story, who you relate to, those relationships are sacred in God's eyes. And so every time you read in your Bible those list of names and wonder why, Wonder instead that God cares enough for individuals' names to be named. They count. And you count. And wonder also how God can work through all kinds of family relationships, our identities, our struggles, our griefs. God can work through our relationships to bring about a story of real salvation, real rescue, and hope. Pedigrees matter, genealogies matter, because our relationships matter in God's eyes. Now, what about singing? Why is singing so special? Well, if genealogies matter, I would dare to say grace matters even more. Genealogical discoveries of your past can cause you to marvel, but can it cause music from you? Look again at this concluding verse from Matthew. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14. From David up to the exile in Babylon are 14. And from the exile of Babylon leading up to Christ are 14 generations. You can see here in one Bible verse the amazing arc of God's hand in history. You can think of these generations with a slanted capital N like that. 
The first 14 generations go up, up, up from Father Abraham stepping out in faith all the way up to mighty King David ruling in Jerusalem. But then from King Solomon, it goes down the history of Israel, the divided kingdom, the wars of Israel and Judah, uh, all of the kings, good and most bad, all the way down to the forced exile into a foreign land, Babylon. It goes down. But then God's people are allowed to return home. And then the end starts going up, 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 all the way to the birth of Jesus, the Messiah. You can see God's movement of grace over human history. And you can see how the genealogy of Jesus points human history in a direction that is of God's plan, God's grace. That's why we sing. I, I don't know if I've ever shared with you, the Ross, the Ross family clan has a motto. And our motto is spem success alit, which means success nourishes hope. And ever since I've heard that, I thought, well, boy, that's brainy. Duh. Success nourishes hope. You know, wow. If you're successful, you'll have hope in your life. It's genius. My dad used to jokingly remark about our ancestry. And how if you look too closely in the Ross family line, you'll find sheep stealers and scalawags. And it's always caused me to wonder, well, is that the kind of success that nourishes hope? With today's reading, I remember, I realize it's Jesus' family tree connected to me and my family that matters so much more. It's not me or my family's successes or failures that will ever give me lasting hope. It's the presence of Jesus the Messiah engrafted into my life and my loved one's lives that will nourish hope for eternity. Jesus' success nourishes our hope. And that's why we sing, friends. That's why we make music. It's why Miriam, after God led his people across the Red Sea, deliverance from slavery, it's why Miriam and the other women grabbed tambourines and they sang, sing to the Lord, he is highly exalted. It's why Mary, the mother of our Lord, would softly sing her Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord. So how do you need to intentionally add Jesus to your family tree? How do you need to make a choice to claim Jesus as your own? Maybe even add your name to Jesus' genealogy. A genealogy that will lead to glory. I recently learned that Lauren Hollander, the world-renowned pianist, has shared why he has spent so much of his life doing music education and working, volunteering to work with disadvantaged children uh, who are struggling from the family trees they've received. Many of them abusive, violent family trees. And he says he has devoted his life to not just performing but educating because he says, working with children in music helps them to discover not just creativity, but even more, he says, it helps them express their love to God. Mr. Hollander commented, he said, when I was a little child, I grew up as a battered child in an abusive family. He said, but when I was a little child and first heard Bach, I told my sister that we didn't have to be afraid of the dark anymore. Someone is watching over us. I could hear it in the music. Can you hear it in the music? There is someone who wants to claim you in grace. You know, it's been pointed out that the English word goodbye 
has come to us today from a shortening of God be with ye. God be with you. And the English word farewell is a contraction of fare thee well. And I like to believe that the word know well is a contraction of now all is well. Friends, we can read a genealogy, but more importantly, we can sing and celebrate. Because in God's eyes, you and your loved ones matter. Hope matters. But here's what makes it now all is well. Grace matters more. So Lord, we thank you for being born into a family. God, we praise you for birthing hope through your Son into the family trees of our life. Jesus, help us this day, this week, to claim you and to offer your name, Jesus, to those we love, to those we meet for the first time. And Jesus, help us to not simply claim you, but like Miriam and Mary, Teach us to celebrate, rejoice, to make music and sing. That you are claiming us in your grace that leads to glory. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen.